So in this example, we're going to have a look at using vCarve Pro to create a simple design and export that using the Kinetic NC post processor. So first of all, let's create a new file and we're doing a single sided job here. And we're going to select the size here, units and millimeters. And we've got a arbitrary width height here of 150 by 150 millimeters and three millimeters thickness of material. Uh, and this is the overall stock material they're going to be working with. We've got a Z0 point at the top surface of the material. And we've also got our datum in the bottom left hand corner. And down in the bottom here we can select the various materials that we might want to um, uh, model in uh, for our preview. So I'll hit OK and you can see we've got 150 by 150. And we'll create a shape here. Let's do a rectangle and uh, let's put a radius on that in the corner 10 millimeters fine and we're going to for example we can find center points such such as this but that would be where it's drawing from so let's just type in and um, we want a width and height of 100 and our anchor points the center here so if we know it's 150 150 it's 75 by 75 is the center and we hit apply okay we've created that and close that now and if we want to add some holes for example um, we can select our radius or diameter here let's say a diameter of four millimeters and we can find key points if we hover over it'll be highlighted and then you can come down and you can see this point uh, is now created where we can select that diameter actually let's go for six and similarly we can find points here and down in the other two corners and just click and then find again and click and we're done so that's our artwork and these other tools inside are various uh, tools related to artwork so in terms of creating our toolpaths then so we come over here and bring out toolpaths click on the pin to keep it set out and um, this is the material beneath us, so we need to select uh, the tools that are going to um, cut out the various pads. So if, if the overall material is this overall size and we want to cut out a panel with four holes in it, first of all, uh, we'll want to um, cut the holes at the four corners. So uh, what we can do then is select the toolpath for that, so a pr profile toolpath. And we'll get some settings related to this toolpath. So, uh, first of all, the start depth that's going to be at the zero point uh, at the top surface of the material. And this cut depth then is how far we, we go th uh, through the material. So, we want to go all the way through, it needs to be at least three millimeters, uh, the, the thickness of the material. But let's just say we've got our sacrificial material underneath, and let's just put four um, to be safe. Uh, selecting a tool. We've got a six millimeter um, diameter hole, um, so let's use a three millimeter anvil here. Um, again, various settings, um, pass depth, that's how much it's allowed to go through in one operation. A, a three millimeter thickness material with three millimeter mill, that's fine. So pass depth is fine at nine, it'll just go through it in, in one step. Um, spindle speeds, generally with a, a Sooner Kres router, um, you could ignore that you set the speed with the dial on the on the side of the, of the router itself and this is the feed rate uh, that we're actually going to uh, be cutting through now the default settings uh, for a lot of this uh, on the software um, can be a bit high uh, for the high z machines for the, the smaller desktop range uh, simply because the software is also used at industrial cncs so we'll use something a bit more uh, conservative let's just say uh, 20 millimeters per second and plunge rate a good rule of thumb is sort of half whatever your 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 comfortable free feed rate is so let's just put 10 millimeters per second you can assign an arbitrary tool number but it'll just default to one and um, i just hit apply here this will just save these settings for this tool uh, while this uh, file is open I'll hit OK and then what we can do is select the actual tool path so I, I clicked on one that's highlighted hit shift and then I can select the others as well and these are all anything that that's selected essentially will be uh, operated on with this tool path that we're defining and um, so the important next step here 
is to select are we machining inside or outside the line we want to cut holes out so we want to be inside the line so I'm going to hit inside here and you'll notice currently it's outside and the, the diagram shows on the outside of this uh, shape if I hit inside you can see it's going inside um, and that's fine don't need to worry about these and the tabs um, or the ramps or leads or anything like that we can just scroll down to the bottom and you can give it a an arbitrary name here and we'll just say um, corner holes okay and if I hit calculate it's warning us our material thickness is three we've said we'll go through four are you sure with that yes we know we're, we're fine with that and now it shows you a, a panel of the material and if I left click and uh, select and drag now we can see that uh, a good 3d view representation of the material you can see that uh, we jog over here vertically above and then we would plunge down do the cuts lift and then do the other three holes to complete uh, the operation and actually uh, with the solid material here if I can scroll in and out if I um, preview all tool paths it'll bring the tool over and cut the four holes and then you can see that's as far as we've got so I'll hit close for that now and you can see here we're, we're still in, the, in this 3d view if I go back to the 2d view and look at the diagram so to complete this panel we're now going to do an operation on the outside of this piece of artwork so again I'll create another profile tool path I'll select this bit of artwork and again we're going through four millimeters and it, same tool as before and this time we're going outside because we want to cut out to separate this piece and again we can ignore the rest of those settings and this profile is, is the just say the outer profile um, and I can hit calculate again yes that's fine going all the way through and then if I preview um, this individual tool as well you can see it's cut it out and that's what you'd be left with on the table of the machine now one further thing you can do here is if you double click on a piece of the waste material it will disappear and then you're left with your your panel that, that you're wanting to result in so now we've got the tool paths um, generated I can close this and now we can go to export our tool path so you can hear down in the bottom right here save tool path so I'll select that and generally I, you, if you tick this I put all visible toolpaths to one file and then anything that we select down here will be part of, of the output and if I tick on toolpaths yet you can see what they're visible and uh, they're both selected with a tick here and if I untick them it would remove them from the selection so everything's selected and we're ready to export that so the one thing we need to do now is select the post processor so for kinetic NC we'll scroll down around K and here we are kinetic NC select that and now we hit save toolpath and it's asked us where we want to save it I'll just save it to the desktop and I'll call this um, panel 1 and the output is .nc so if I hit save and I minimize this And did I save that to the wrong place? No, here we are. Okay, just a slight delay. And currently, this output isn't associated with any file type. So if I go to properties and if I change, now this is just to have a, a quick uh, view. So if I just hit Notepad, okay, and that means if I double click it now, I can I can have a quick look. And you can see this is the G code um, output of that particular. Um, piece of, of artwork that's turned it into our tool paths so that's complete and that will be ready then to be loaded in and previewed in the kinetic NC software